evening. Why don't we see you this evening? Thank you for joining us for Ask Wednesday Worship for Braving the Snow. And welcome to all those that are watching us online. If you want a bulletin for tonight's service, you can go to TrinityVoiceVille.com for that bulletin. So just a couple announcements. First, for those of you that love the baked potato meal, have no fear. It will be here. It'll be two weeks from today. So um, the, uh, the meal schedule has shifted slightly. Uh, so next week is tacos at 5.30, and then two weeks from today will be the baked potato meal. So you'll still get that. Uh, worship will still be at 6.30 um, every Wednesday, and we start the whole the evening prayer service next week. So we invite you to join us for that. This Sunday is our Winter Family Fest, and now we have a bunch of new snow to play around with, and that will be starting at 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, we invite you of all ages to join us. Uh, at, uh, on Sunday for the Winter Family Fest. I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements to you and invite you at this time to please stand and turn to him 608 in your red general, softly and tenderly. 608. <laughs> Blot out my transgressions. 
Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness of the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel becomes, comes from the sixth, Matthew, sixth chapter of Matthew, beginning with the first verse. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your half left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners, so they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. In order to start, to have a relationship, you got to have a place to start. And when I was a young whippersnapper in high school, there were four ways in which you could try to start a romantic relationship with a girl. Four ways, okay? The first, first way was, of course, to call them on the phone and have the nervous conversation on the phone where you get really nervous, you know, and you think about dial, and you maybe don't, and then you do, and then you do, and then you get on, you make a little small talk, and then you might get the courage on the phone to ask them to go to the movies with you or go to somebody's birthday party or something like that where you can, can hang out. So that, that was way number one, okay? Way, by the way, that was the hardest way in my house because I had two sisters who were on the phone at all times, and we had one line. No cell phones, kids. One line, that's it. With a really long cord, right? Everybody knows the real long cord. I see some shaking, and I like to see that. All right, the second way is actually the way that worked for me. The old-fashioned pass the notes. Take a note, will you go out with me? No, yes or no. Hand the note, usually through some sort of emissary, some sort of friend. Um, that worked, that's how I got my, my date to homecoming as a junior in high school. That's how mature I was. Junior in high school, passing a note. And, uh, you know, of course, there's danger in that method because if, you, if the note gets misplaced or dropped, 
or a teacher finds it, then you get embarrassed in front of the whole class or school. Now, the third way is to not, is not only to send a note with a friend, but literally to send a friend to ask for you. You want to go to homecoming with Brenna? That's the other way, right? That is a, a direct method, but doesn't involve you actually speaking to the individual. And then, of course, the least, the way that nobody ever wanted to do it, and that was literally to walk up to the person yourself and say, do you want to go out? That never happened. We never did that. The actual direct asking. That's like the most embarrassing thing in the world. Now today there's all sorts of different me methods. Maybe there's a Snapchat that's sent, or maybe you slide into their DMs on Instagram, or you use a dating app. Look at like that is that is laughing. You slide into DMs now, they can barely have a discussion about that. <laughs> I, I watch I watch Sadie's daughters hand out Snapchat you know, handles to, to random boys at, at, at youth gatherings. So, you know, that, that was the modern ways, you know, now. Or you still can literally walk up to somebody and initiate the relationship, which they still never do. But a relationship has to have a place where it starts. And our relationship with God, it starts with God and not with us. It is God who initiates relationship with us. And we see that in our second reading today. It is Christ who comes to us. And the reason that has to happen that way is because we have a barrier between us and God called sin. And here on Ash Wednesday, we remember a couple of things. We remember the fact that we are mortal, we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But we also remember that we're sinful. That no matter how hard we try, we make mistakes and sin against God and against each other and even against ourselves. That sin is a barrier between us and God. And no matter how hard we try, we can't break that barrier. And so God breaks it for us. God sends Jesus Christ to break through that barrier of sin, to have a relationship with you, to let you know that you're loved, to let you know that you're cared for, to let you know that you are God's child. And God does this by sending Jesus to the cross to die for our sins and rise to give us newness of life. Tonight we will put ashes on our forehead to remind ourselves of our mortality, but it also is a reminder of our baptism. Because in baptism we are marked at the cross of Christ forever. Which is why when you come forward, the baptismal font is here. To remind you of that promise. And to remind you that you are in relationship with God. Always. God will never stop trying to reach you. God will call you on the phone. God will send people to remind you that God loves you. God will slide into those Instagram DMs to remind you that you are forgiven. And that God's grace in Jesus Christ is for you. Because that's God's promise. It's to never give up being in relationship with you. And during this Lenten season, my hope is that you will strengthen that relationship with your God. That you will acknowledge and know that God is there in your life every day. Loving you and forgiving you and walking with you always. Today we remember that we are dust. But we also remember that we are in relationship with God our entire lives and for our life after this mortal life ends because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, what Jesus Christ has done for you. For that we can say thanks be to God. Amen. For those wondering, with Amy, it was a setup. And then we did have a phone call on the phone, like I called her before we met in person. So it was one of those methods. Not the DMs like, like uh, Natalie does. I'd like you at this time to please stand and turn to him 592, just as I am without the plea. 592. <laughs>
believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I want you at this time to turn to page 252, the front part of your red hymnal. We continue our service in the bottom left of page 252. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and in worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is raised. At this time, we invite you, if you choose to come forward, to receive ashes on your forehead. You receive these ashes as a reminder of your mortality and also as a reminder of God's promise to you. We ask that when you do come forward, you come forward um, up the center aisle and back to the side in whatever way that you want. And if you have bangs on your on that overhang your forehead, I do appreciate if you push your hair up a little. Also, these are ashes, and so sometimes they spill a little bit, so you might, you know, there might be an ash or two that might get on your clothing. I'll do our, my best to make sure. That doesn't happen. Please come at your convenience to receive your ashes. <laughs> Remember your 
dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I invite you to please stand and turn to page 254. Again, we'll be at the top of page 254. Accomplishing us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Holy and loving God, we thank you for initiating a relationship with us by breaking through the barrier of sin through your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in this Lenten season in our relationship with you and remind us always of the love you give us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask that you give healing and strength to all who suffer this day in any way. Let them know that they're not alone and be there for them, healing them of their ailments, guiding them by your love, and strengthening them in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask that you would be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We give thanks for the saints that have departed and for the faith that they have shown us. Be with those who grieve their loss, and remind them of the promise of eternal life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we ask that you keep all safe during our snow event going on today and tomorrow. We ask that you especially watch over those who are homeless, or those who have no heat for their homes. We ask that you would inspire us to use our resources to help those in need. And may you walk with us and keep all of us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, during this Lenten season, strengthen us through our Lenten disciplines of repentance, of fasting, and giving of alms. We ask that you would bless us during this season that we might be strengthened in relationship with you, and that you might walk with us, reminding us that your Son has given his life for ours, so that we might be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace with each other, and then we'll have the offering.
please stand. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to come forward to receive the gifts of God for you, the people of God, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you. Gluten free bread is available upon request. Grape juice is in the center of the tray. If you wish to not come forward for communion, there is all in one communion uh, that an usher can give you. Um, I think everyone here knows what they're doing, so just a reminder to come up the center aisle. And out the side, we'll start with this side and then this side. All right, come and receive God's gifts for you.